In the headlines, INEA commences post-elections review in Zamfara. PDP governors demand credible polls in Bayelsa, Imo, Kogi. Six dead, 15 others injured in Enugu Road crash. And on the foreign scene, South Africa police launch manhunt after six die in mass shooting. Hello and welcome to Trust News Update. I'm Darshan Husayna Usman. Now the news in detail. The Independent National Electoral Commission in Zamfara State has embarked on a review of the 2023 general election in order to improve future polls. The state's resident electoral commissioner, Saidu Babara, told journalists that the essence was to get first-hand information from participants on the successes, challenges and losses recorded in the last elections with a view to prepare to correct them in the 2027 general elections. The report. In this hall are returning officers, collection and electoral officers, and assistant electoral officers in the 2023 general elections. Also present, management staff of the Independent National Electoral Commissioner, INEC Zafara State. They are here to conduct post-review of the 2023 general elections to identify successes, challenges, and losses and to recommend ways the Commission can improve in the next elections. The resident electoral commissioner, INEC in Zafara State, Saidu Babura, disclosed that the commission selected the actual participants of the 2023 general elections from each of the three senatorial districts as well as federal and state constituencies to give real-time information on what transpired in the field during the conduct of the election in Zafara State. The participants were shared into groups to brainstorm and come up with the issues that arose during the last general elections in Zamfara State to help the Commission strengthen its preparation for any future elections. The People's Democratic Party Governors Forum arose from the inaugural meeting in Abuja with a call on the federal government to immediately rise up to the occasion and tackle the killings, kidnappings and attacks across the country. The governors particularly said they were worried about the killings in Plateau and Zamfara states and asked the federal government and security agencies to rise up to the occasion. In a communique, after over three hours meeting in a quiet bomb governor's lodge in Asokoro, read by the Bauchi State Governor and Chairman of the Forum, Bala Mohammed, the governors also advised the federal government and the Independent National Electoral Commission to be neutral in the coming governorship elections in Bayelsa, Imo, and Kogi states. The following issues were discussed. One, making love to work together. The aim of the forum is to provide a platform for peer review issues, policies, programs, and achievements, as legacy projects of member government support the BDB states. The meeting advised the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, the security agencies, the federal government, neutral in the conduct of opposite elections. The meeting noted the deteriorating situation, security situation in the country, especially the wanton destruction of lives and properties of Plato and Calvary states. Consequently, advised the federal government and security agencies to drive the situation and bring the situation under control. In the interim, the forum will cooperate with the federal government on issues concerning the welfare of Nigerians and their governments while striving to maintain the independence and autonomy of the forum through offering constructive criticism where necessary. Thank you very much. Excellent. 
A multiple road crash involving a trailer and other smaller vehicles has claimed six lives along the dilapidated Uguonyema Hill Enugu. Four members of a family, a man, his wife, son and daughter, said to be driving into Enugu capital, died in the accident. Also, 15 other travellers sustained injuries in the incident and were rushed to our Saviour Hospital, 9th Mile Connor and Enugu State Teaching Hospital, Park Lane, Enugu, for treatment. Reports say the trailer loaded with gas and descending the slopey road had lost control following a brake failure and rammed into the long queue of vehicles. Two persons died in the bus. Four other members of one family traveling in a Jeep sports utility vehicle also died while several others sustained injuries. The only survivor from the family of five is being treated at our Saviour Hospital in Enugu. The sector commander of the Federal Road Safety Corps, Joseph Toby, said only five died from the multiple crash, stressing that several others sustained injuries. He stated that the quick intervention of fire service and soldiers prevented more casualties. Chief Medical Director of Our Saviour Hospital, where many of the victims are being treated, Emmanuel Ngu, however, confirmed that six dead bodies recovered from the accident were deposited in the morgue of the hospital. Operatives of the Ebonyi Police Command have killed two hoodlums who were allegedly enforcing sit-at-home order in the state. Sit-at-home in the southeast is the brainchild of the separatist indigenous people of Biafra to protest the continued detention of its leader, Namdi Kanu. The hoodlums were said to have shot sporadically into the air within the Oposi area in the Oazara local government area of Ebonyi State while trying to enforce a sit-at-home order on Monday when operatives of the command engaged them in a gun duel. In a statement on Tuesday, the police public relations officer in the state, Onome Onoa Koyea, said men of the command gunned down one of the hoodlums as the shootout ensued. Still on security, a priest in Ebonyi State who was abducted on Monday in Isu Onicha local government area has regained his freedom, police have said. Joseph Azubuike, a priest of St. Charles Parish Mbazele Isu in Onicha local government area who was abducted alongside three others was released unhurt. Anome Onoa Poyea. The spokesperson of the Ebonyi Police Command said the priest was released at about 6 p.m. on Tuesday. According to a statement from the Abakaliki Diocese, the gunman abducted Azubuike near his parish on his way back from pastoral duties. Security operatives of Tantita Security Services Limited, the surveillance company of a former militant leader, Tom Pola, in collaboration with the Nigerian Armed Forces, have set ablaze the 500 capacity metric tons arrested vessel used for stealing Nigerian assets by criminals. The arrested vessel, with the name MT Tura LL, laden with 150 metric tons of stolen crude oil on Escravo Sea, was set ablaze on Tuesday. Speaking with newsmen in Wari, shortly after setting the vessel ablaze, the Executive Director, Technical and Operations, Tentita Security Services Nigeria Limited, Captain Waredi Eniswa said the Aliriza Bay criminal ship that has terrorized Nigerian economic and sovereignty in terms of maritime for over 10 years has been rendered useless today. He said the essence is to send a stronger message to both local and international partners not to work against Nigeria. There was commotion at Namdi Azikiwe International Airport, Abuja, on Tuesday evening as Max Air flight to Sokoto developed a fault 19 minutes after takeoff and had to make a detour. The flight scheduled to depart in the afternoon but delayed till evening was eventually cancelled after it successfully landed, leaving many passengers stranded. 
The staff of Media Trust Group, Abdurrahman Umar, who was one of the passengers, reports that passengers protested the cancellation and demanded a refund of their air tickets after eight hours delay and subsequent cancellation. Manager of the airline, however, told the stranded passengers that there will be no automatic refund as the incident was not envisaged, advising the passengers to get alternative flights to their destinations. No money, no money, no flight. No money, no flight. Kano State Government has expressed commitment to solving water shortage in the state, especially in Kano Metropolis. Governor Kabir Yusuf said this when he received the country director of French Development Agency, Xavier Moran, who called on him at the governor's lodge, Aminu Kano House, Asokoro, in Abuja. The governor said that the visit is timely as water is a critical sector that would be given the needed attention by his government and will do everything possible to ensure that all stakeholders in water resources are engaged in solving water problem in the state. The meeting discussed the AFD and World Bank co-founded project of Kano Urban Water Sector Reform, Rural and Access, an agricultural market project geared towards tackling water shortage that has been disturbing Kano Metropolis for a long while. Earlier, the AFD's country director, Xavier Muran, said the visit to the governor is to congratulate him on his election and discuss areas of collaboration with Kano state government so as to work together in so many facets of human development. You're watching Trust News Update, coming up after the break. We take a look at media content as positive power for maternal health. Do stay with us. Welcome to Trust TV, where we document the Nigerian story. Our programming showcases the rich culture and diversity of Nigeria. We strive to amplify the voices that make our nation unique. Our programming is designed to take you on a journey through the different tastes of entertainment in our country. We showcase the best of Nigerian culture, from traditional crafts to cutting-edge technology. Our team of expert journalists are dedicated to unveiling the intricacies of our culture and telling the untold stories that binds us all. And let's not forget the food. Nigeria has diverse and flavorful cuisines, some of the favorites to millions across the world. What is Nigeria without its people, their passions and their talent? Trust TV is not just a channel. It's a platform that brings you closer to everything that makes Nigeria great. Trust TV, documenting the Nigerian story. Just joining us, this is the news update on Trust TV. Now, a recap of our top stories. For me, I have my eight years, and uh, I think uh, I have enough. A challenge to serve in line with the oath I have taken today. Commander of the Board of Directors of the Nigerian Deposit Insurance Corporation. And an end. Dolce State residents are appealing to stakeholders in the oil sector to consider the plight of killing in Moravan Dama Avenue, uh, Okaru in Plateau State. I'm, I'm, I'm confident 
I have what it takes to turn Nigeria around. I of FCT residents on the need to give Gen Z a proper orientation. When a country organizes a credible election, both the government and the opposition will work. Welcome back and thanks for staying with us on Trust News Update. A recap of some of our top stories. We told you that INEC commences post-elections review in Zamfara. We also heard that PDP governors demand credible polls in Bayelsa, Imo, Kogi. Moving to other stories, Pakistani female child education activist Malala Yousafzai wants leaders to invest in education to better the lives of children and bring development to the nation. Malala won the 2014 Nobel Peace Prize laureate at the age of 17. She made the call during an official visit to, Bordu to Borno, Maiduguri, uh, along with other United Nations envoy. The, uh, she observed that there has been improvement in education, but more needs to be done for the safety of children, mostly girls, and also making education accessible. Malala added that education brings development and peace in any nation that makes it a priority. Um, we are worried about the safety and security of girls' education. We are also concerned about the lack of investment in girls' education as well. But we also know that as challenging as it seems, it is the collective work of people, of the government, of the uh, civil um, society, of uh, education activists, all leaders to invest in the education of the future generation. We need to ensure that we are investing in innovative ways, in digital ways to make education more accessible. The Boko Haram insurgents have destroyed about 1,000 classrooms in Borno State. They destroyed about 832 municipal buildings comprising of health institutions, you know, comprising of local government secretariats, police stations. A communication and development expert, Umaru Pate, says media content can affect a change on issues related to maternal health and mindset of policymakers in Nigeria. Pate disclosed this to journalists shortly after a presentation on mass media behavior change and development at the first 1,000 days of a child's life held in Gombe State. Trust TV's Adamu Imam completes the report. The communication expert who doubled as the vice chancellor of Federal University Kashare maintained that journalists can make a positive impact in addressing health challenges with the aid of content credibility. So what can we give you in terms? So it's for the media to prepare our minds for all of this, not just to condemn, condemn, condemn. Go and do your research and understand. He also expressed concern about the challenges the media faces while trying to help change the narratives that will make policies and programs of government tilt towards addressing issues affecting the society. What are some of these issues? Because the internet has democratized access, it has enabled new owners of media to emerge, and it has created platforms that has given competition to our legacy media. So there is this issue of or the challenge of funding. The monies that they used to realize from advertising, from sponsorship, are no longer flowing into the regular media organizations. They are not going to the platform. The big media, I mean, uh, uh, giant techs are taking the monies. And then the smaller bloggers and others are also cornering. So the chunk that is going to the regular media is negligible. He further said the role of the media extends to behavioral change and people's towards healthy practices as well as ensure the safety of a child with their mothers from the day of conception to the second birthday of a child. Adami Imam, 
Trust TV News. Residents of Benway State have tasked President Bola Tinubu to lead with integrity and be purpose-driven as he assumes the chairmanship of the Economic Community of West African States. This is coming days after President Tinubu was declared chairman of the regional body at its 63rd meeting in Bissau. That's Guinea-Bissau. Jimmy Adzandi has the report. The president honor commitments he made at his inaugural speech as the chairman of ECOWAS. The resident tax President Tinubu to tackle insecurity and deepen democracy in the sub-region. There's an opportunity for him to, you know, to do well for Nigeria and within the African, the West African sub-region. You know, while accepting his um, election as as um, chairman of ECOWAS, he said that democracy is the best form of government. So. It means that for President Tinubu, he has to be democratic within the country and within the sub-region. He also mentioned the issue of security, you know, and the issue of coup in the sub-region. He said the sub-region cannot tolerate more of coup deterrent. So it's a good thing. But they say charity begins at home. So if he goes out there to say security should be tackled, it means he has to tackle security insecurity in Nigeria. Other residents are concerned with the economic developments in the sub-region and said the president stands a chance to enhance its economic stability. If there is free trade across the continent, then when one gets to the borders, it should be real free movement of goods and services within the sub-region. Business will thrive. Wealth will be created. So we are happy he is the chairman and we know that he's going to not just give lip service, but in reality, let the borders be free for trade. Orafa also said Mr. President should quickly work on a single currency policy for the good of the sub-region. Other countries and other continents have adopted single currencies. I will see how strong the currencies are. So within the African continent, if we adopt a single currency, I think it's going to help. And uh, it is going to deepen penetration of trade among the African nations. Most of the residents are concerned that President Tinubu has what it takes to develop ECOWAS and take the body to new heights. Jimmy Azande, Trust TV News, Makodi. Away from Nigeria, a mass shooting in South Africa has left six people dead and four wounded when three men entered a yard of a home and opened fire. The shootings happened on Tuesday night in the township of Kwanobule, near the town of Kariega in the Eastern Cape province. The suspects have not been arrested and a search is underway, police said on Wednesday. South Africa has one of the highest homicide rates in the world and at least 2,629 people were killed with a firearm in the first three months of this year, according to official crime statistics. Kidnapping for ransom and the targeted killing of celebrities have also been rising in South Africa. The police said five men and a woman were killed in Tuesday's shooting and a woman was among the wounded. Police said the motive for the shooting is unclear. There has been a series of mass shootings in South Africa recently, including at least three this year. Last year, 16 people were killed in the township of Soweto in Johannesburg after numerous gunmen shot at people at a bar. Eight people were fatally shot at a birthday party in the same Eastern Cape province in January. A child was among 10 members of the same family killed at a house in April. Angola and the Democratic Republic of Congo have announced a joint project to rehabilitate the railway line linking the Congolese mining regions to the Atlantic Ocean. Luanda and Kinshasa granted a group of investors a 30-year concession to operate the line linking the Angolan port of Lobito to Kolwezi in the heart of the DRC's mineral-producing region. 
The 1,700-kilometer railway line was built 100 years ago by British investors. The $555 million project, partly financed by the U.S., is expected to develop exports of copper, ore and other products, boost regional trade and strengthen Angola's ties with Western countries. The DRC is the world's leading producer of cobalt and Africa's leading producer of copper, two minerals used in the manufacturing of solar panels and electric cars. According to the Angolan operator VEC Turis, work should start within the next three months. The consortium, which includes commodities traders uh, Trafigura and Portuguese construction company Mota Angel, hopes to reduce the journey time between the DRC and Lobito to less than 36 hours with at least six trains a day over the next five years. Now in sports, a Fulham supporter has been banned from football for three years after admitting a public order offence relating to homophobic chanting. Josiah Norman, 25 years from Brixton, pleaded guilty at Westminster Magistrates Court to the offence, which occurred when Fulham played Chelsea at Stamford Bridge in February. Norman was also fined. West London rivals Chelsea and Fulham drew nil-nil in the match at which the incident occurred. The prosecution followed a January 2022 decision by the Crown Prosecution Service to define a chant which has often been aimed at Chelsea players and supporters as a homophobic slur. The Football Association can also now charge clubs if their fans sing the chant. Supporters of Wolves and Liverpool were also arrested in connection with homophobic chants alleged to have taken place in games against Chelsea last season, while Manchester City, Manchester United and Nottingham Forest all condemned reports of homophobic chanting by their fans after they played Chelsea. And with that, we've come to the end of Trust News Update. Don't forget to follow us across all our social media platforms. I'm Darshan Hussein Al Usman. Thanks for watching.